in an emergency. Some people can carry you and everything's peaceful. But in the time of war, in the time she picked him up, and while she was running with him, this is in 2 Samuel chapter 4, she ends up dropping him. She ended up dropping him, and his legs were broken. Now, although he's in the, the lineage of the kingdom, he, he is one who has royal blood running through his veins. Now he shipped to a low place. Yeah. Now he shipped to a pastorless place. And that pastorless place was called Low Debar. I come to tell you before you get here, you got to deal with a place called there. There was a place mm, called Low Debar. And it's amazing that he's there where they dropped off all the people that they didn't want to deal with. And there are a lot of us, we don't have a physical place called Lodabar. But we got them in a Lodabar in our mind. Everybody that have issues that we're not equipped to handle. We send them to a place and put them in a category called Lodabar. I understand why all of those were there. But it's hard for me to fathom uh, Mephibosheth with his royal self. Going from a castle. Going from having a nurse, going from being here in life, dropped off mm -hmm, in a place called Lodabar. We're living in a time where people will hurt you and then drop you off and leave you alone to deal with what they cause. I mean, since it's your fault, do you at least feel responsible uh, for taking care of me? He ends up in Lodabar. These have to be. Uh, I'm gonna cut on through the field. This has to. This has to be very interesting for Mephibosheth. Because although he is five years old, he has to at least remember life better than what it was. Lean on your neighbor and ask him, "Do you remember life better than this? Do you remember at any point in your life?" Oh, that you were better off financially, emotionally. And so now he reflects. He now has lost his identity. I would like to suggest for you for a moment that at verse 5, I, I, at age 5, I wonder if anybody ever told him who his daddy and granddaddy and who, what, I wonder if anybody ever stopped to explain to him uh, who he was connected to and what belonged to him. I, I, I suggest tonight in my clothes that nobody ever told him. And I come today to tell you, you don't belong in Lord of I enjoy your company, but you don't belong in the suit line. You don't belong there. Some of the people, they may belong there, but I need you to high five somebody right quick and say, you don't belong there. You're better than this. God is your daddy. I'm a father. You have no business struggling. You have no business living from paycheck to paycheck. Royalty is running through your bloodline. Because we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. And we are a peculiar people. I find a couple of people on your row and say, there's a reason I don't fit. There's a reason. I've been trying all this time to fit in with these broke, negative folk. I've been trying all I can to deal with these ghetto folk. And they keep recognizing, and they call me bougie, but they don't understand. It's just they are speaking that I don't belong on Broke Boulevard. My spirit place is calling my name. So years begin to go by when he is now convinced that he's one of them. Uh, without realizing that his there was not his here. That, 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 not that, that although he was there, that was not his final destination. I got to cut through here, but I need to holler. And I need to tell somebody, this is not your final destination. When you have to somebody and say, this is not your final destination. 
It might be a step, but it ain't a stop. God is getting ready to do something awesome in your life. So, 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 so now we find that the better self is here in this passionless land. Hanging around a bunch of people who have no royalty in his, their blood. He's hanging around them and it seems that uh, right before God gets ready to elevate you. You, 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 you go through a season where people begin to act like they forgot all about you. And so now you got to go through a season in your life where you are years of overlooked and forgotten. You ended up in a place that it wasn't your fault. I need somebody to holler and tell somebody it really wasn't my fault. They're calling you names, but you didn't molest yourself. They're calling you names. Uh-huh, but you just got the bad deal over what was done to you. Out of early, oh, it's getting quiet in here. All of this stuff is not your fault. Tell your neighbor some things happened. Uh, the enemy tried to sabotage my future. Uh, but the good news is, I'm still alive. I need somebody to holler. You might be crippled. You might got some issues. You might have been in a wheelchair. But the best part of your situation, that you are still alive. And as long as there's life, there's hope. Hey, oh High five your neighbor and say, as long as there's life, there's hope. They come to tell you that there's a reason why he ended up in Lodabar. Because if they had heard that he was alive, they would have killed him. They would have finished out the vendetta that they had with Saul. I come to tell you, God, God has hidden you in plain sight. And it has all been for your protection. They were supposed to forget that you existed. They were supposed to forget that you were alive. Because God had to let you uh, grow into some stuff. And tell your name, I'm growing in, I'm growing in, I'm growing in to a greater season in my life. Tell your neighbor, I'm growing into it. I wasn't ready for it in five, but I feel growth. I got some things in my life, uh, but I know that destiny is calling my name. Please lean on your neighbor one more time and say, greater is calling your name. Uh, greater is calling your name. I know you don't like touching your neighbor and stuff and speaking it out of your mouth, but it's okay. When you speak it out of your mouth, I'm forcing you to decree something and declare it. Don't touch nobody. Stay broke. Don't touch nobody. Stay down. But listen what I'm saying. When you decree a thing out of your mouth, you are establishing it in the atmosphere. And I want to let you tell somebody so you will have a witness. Because by this time tomorrow, somebody going to tell somebody, this I tell you. Something was getting ready to shift in my life. Somebody clap your hands and holler hallelujah up in this. So, although a connection had gotten him into the some trouble, I'm, 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 it was a covenant that would get him out of it. There had been a covenant between David and Jonathan. That, 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 that David and Jonathan, they were brothers, they were very close, and they were tight as tight could be. And we understand that although Jonathan, uh, because of his who he was connected to, he lost his life as well. But David, 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 even when Saul was trying to kill him, Jonathan remained connected to his friend. I'm going to tell you, you can't let other folk battles turn you against your friends. Your, my daddy might got a problem with you, but you ain't done nothing to me. And so Jonathan recognized that his own daddy was right. And so he remains connected. And there was a covenant that he made that when he would come into the kingdom, 
that when he would get in a place of authority, that he would bless somebody for Jonathan's sake. He got up, he got up one morning. He said, do anybody know, do anybody know anybody from Saul's house? I'm looking for somebody to bless for Jonathan's sake. Nobody knew of anybody. But there happened to be one person who had remained connected with the royal lineage. They said, I, I know somebody uh, that's still one left and his name is Mephibosheth. Where is he? He's down in a place called Lodibar. And he said, well, uh, I want to go to where he is. He said, wait a minute, king. Before we go down there, David, I want to tell you that he is crippled. And when you were crippled, it mean you were ostracized. That mean when you were crippled, nobody want to deal with you. There are people who will deal with you while you're walking. Oh, they won't deal with you when you're crippled. And so they had gotten rid of him. Nobody had heard from him. But he said, I want to let you know that he is crippled. He said, it doesn't matter because the covenant is in place. And he goes down to Lodibar. Can you imagine? Can you imagine him? Can you imagine him going down there with all of his, his royal attire? Going down there with chariots and servants. Going down looking for somebody of all places in a place called Lodibar. Can't you see those who are down and distraught? Uh, trying, trying to figure out why the king did. Mighty man of valor would be in the Lodibar. Uh, who is he coming here to get? Uh, he's coming here from Mephibosheth. Uh, he got Mephibosheth. He says, are you Mephibosheth? He began to verify who he was, what he did. He says, I want you to know that you're leaving Lodibar, and I'm putting you in a place where you belong. Oh, all the days of your life, you're going to sit at the king's table. Here it is when you finally get to where you're going. There's going to be somebody uh, looking at the way you walk. Uh, there's going to be somebody uh, looking at your present condition. Uh, judging your present uh, without understanding your past. Uh, uh, but God uh, has put some things in place uh, that Mephibosheth uh, would be lifted back to his rightful place. Uh, from Lodabar back to the palace. Uh, and I'm going I wish I had somebody to talk to me. I'm going back to where I belong. I had to rub some pennies together. I had to reach between the car seat. But I know this is not my destiny. That the best is ahead of me. And my, my situation is getting ready to change for the better. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. He should have been excluded because of his physical condition. But one thing about it, he says, I want you to put him at the king's table. Because once you were at the table, your legs are hidden. And I come to tell you, God's getting ready to put you in a place where what's wrong with you is and he'll prepare a table before you in the presence. I see you looking at me. But I need somebody to talk back to me. Tell your neighbor, there is a table. There's a table that's waiting on me. There's an elevated seat that God's going to put me. There he is going to put me right where I belong. 
to be fruitful and multiply. What I'm trying to tell you, God is putting some things in place. And here is what the text says, that there was a point workers who would work not for themselves, but that would work on the fellowship and his generations. shaking up your place of complacency. And he separated you from people who would have hindered you. For him, Lodibar was not a bad place. It became the place of his protection. It became the place where he could grow and look ordinary. When extraordinary was attached to his life. There's a bigger church. There's a bigger house. There's a bigger platform. <laughs> there's a bigger income. There's a bigger. But right now God is saying just stay alive. <laughs> You're like a caterpillar. That's in your season of becoming. And before it's over, caterpillars stuck on the ground, but flying potential. He's called ugly, but something changes. He changes in private, in a cocoon. There's some things God is doing in your life that people don't need to witness. Because they'll later use it against you. There's some stuff that's falling off of you. Y'all stop making a scandal out of stuff that's just gossip. When nobody knows you, it's just talk. Why do we get on Facebook and make it public? Because of a couple of folk talking. We make it. We make it. Where other people catch it and they take it and make it bigger than what it was. You're not dealing with a scandal. You're just dealing with a bunch of haters. That's saying a bunch of negative things. But when God puts your name in the right place. God is getting ready to connect you with some people that will excuse some stuff. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't deserve this. And when I thought of your crippled state, yes. when I thought of all you had to go through, hallelujah, hallelujah. that some would have considered you disqualified. But you can't disqualify who you didn't call. Yes. 
I said you cannot disqualify who you did not call. You can't unchoose who you never chose. For the foundations of the world. He called us. He chose you. He ordained you. And if you could see your next, you would be tripping over your now. Lift your hands up again and again. To give God a praise. Because the world is getting ready to know your name. God's getting ready to shift you in the circle that you should have been in. It was your right. But something happened. I need you to open your mouth, please. Don't say anything to your neighbor that's saying about them. Because some of these people you're going to be separated from to get to where God wants you to be. We don't like that. We don't like separation because we love connection. We want to take everybody with us. But God is doing a new thing in our lives. You belong here. Here. Behind the gate. Here. Mega ministry. Here. Traveling the world. Here. People see it. They just don't want to tell you. They know you're greater. They know you're going further. They see that you're an eagle. And you should be mentoring them. And they call themselves trying to mentor you. That's to keep you up under them. I'm waiting to hear some people. If you feel me in the spirit. Come on, I'm waiting for some worship. I'm waiting for some worship. Something may be wrong with his legs, but nothing wrong with his hands. And I'm gonna lift my hands. I'm gonna lift my hands and I'm gonna open my mouth. A closed mouth don't get fed. When I count to three, I want you to open your mouth and I want you to shift from that cute little charismatic place. And I want you to shift to a place where you open up your mouth. Come on, because we're going to a realm. Stand up, man. We're going to a realm that everybody can go. Anybody can praise him. A sinner can praise him. But when you move to that place of worship, when you move to that place of worship, when you go get into the real summer of us, that's what I'm looking for. When I come to believe, I want you to shift in the rhythm of the spirit. And I want you to open up your mouth and you. Open up your mouth and give me glory. Are you ready? One, two.
Just, 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 you know, just like I call for you at all these people. 